In this example, we're going to be calculating a limit of this kind of weird looking rational function. This rational function has kind of got fractions within fractions, which isn't typically seen. However, uh, this problem actually is a preview to what we'll be looking at um, soon for difference quotients and related to being able to define uh, the derivative using a formal definition. Um, and that involves limits. And so we're going to practice doing the sort of algebra that we're going to be needing for that in this problem that's given. So uh, again, the first thing we try when we are computing limits is just plug in and see what happens. So uh, let's go ahead and do that just to um, see what happens. In general, we see that this denominator is going to be equal to zero, um, but depending on what the top does um, gives us different uh, plans to move forward when the denominator is zero. So let's see what happens. That denominator is zero, but when we plug in the zero for the top, we've got a one over two plus zero, minus 1 over 2. So in the top, we are looking at 1 half minus a half, so we do in fact have a 0 over 0 situation. So we're going to need to um, manipulate this uh, kind of weird rational function that has fractions within fractions so that we can cancel something. And that's something that we're going to need to cancel is that h, because that's the problem factor. That's the factor in the bottom that was making it 0. It's going to appear in the top too, and we're going to need to cancel them out. So let's see. We need to figure out how to adjust this original, um, this original limit this original expression here. So we've got the limit as h goes to 0. The thing we started with was 1 over 2 plus h minus 1 half over h. So we need a way to be able to get rid of the fractions within fractions. And there's multiple ways of doing this. You could just combine the two uh, fractions in the top by getting a common denominator and then divide fractions. Another approach that I think is uh, cleaner if you uh, get enough practice with it here is you can multiply by this uh, very special form of one that will knock out all of the tiny denominators at once. So we see that we have a small denominator of 2 plus h. So that's a factor there that we need to get rid of. And we have a small denominator in the second term on the top that would be a 2. Well, if we were to multiply the top by those two factors when we uh, distribute it out, those two small denominators would go away. But we can't just multiply the top by something without balancing it in the bottom. So there's this special form of 1 where the top and bottom match there. So what we're going to be doing then is in the bottom, we just carry on the extra stuff that we use to balance. So in the bottom now, we've got this 2h times 2 plus h, where we've multiplied the h times the 2 times 2 plus h. So all that's just left in the bottom. Now what we do in the top is take those two factors that are multiplied together, the 2 and the 2 plus h factor, and we distribute it across the subtraction sign. So when we do that, uh, what we end up with here is the 2 times the 2 plus h on the top with the 2 plus h on the bottom. So you see now that uh, that 2 plus h factor is going to disappear in that first term now. Uh, similarly, we've got the 2 times the 2 plus h on the top with the 2 on the bottom um, when we distribute to it to that second term in the subtraction. So now here, the 2's are going to cancel. And what that leaves us with is uh, the limit as h goes to 0. Now our top has the... Uh, has the term 2 for the first term, and then from it we are going to subtract, since the 2's cancel in our second term there, we've got to subtract the 2 plus h factor. Okay. Notice I do have to keep the parentheses there because that subtraction sign is going to have to be distributed. The denominator we just uh, carry on here. So now I'm going to go ahead and distribute my subtraction sign and see what happens. When I d distribute that, I've got a 2 minus a 2 minus an h on top, and then we've just got the bottom um, copied over. So we've got the 2 minus a 2 that cancel, leaving us with the negative h on the top. So we've got the limit as h goes to 0. We've got a negative h on the top. We've got 2h 
two, times 2 plus h on the bottom. So now we see that factor of h that we knew ahead of time was going to be our problem factor, that factor that's on the top and the bottom is going to cancel now. And so that leaves us with the limit. Notice I'm continuing to hold on to this limit because I haven't taken the limit again yet, or I haven't attempted to take the limit again yet by plugging in. Um, so I hold on to that limit uh, notation in the front. The H's are canceling, leaving me with just the negative 1 on top and the 2 times 2 plus H in the bottom. And at this point, since my problem factor canceled out, I'm ready to be able to successfully now compute the limit by plugging in. So when I plug in, I drop that limit notation that's in the front. And so that leaves me with negative 1 on the top times, or divided by, and then on the bottom we'll have a 2 times the 2 plus 0 when I plug in that 0. So we're looking at negative 1 over 2 times 2, so that would be negative 1 over 4. And that value would be the limit that we are looking for here.